Why is soft proofing important? Simply put, soft proofing your images before having them printed is a great way to simulate how they will appear based on specific printer and paper combinations. In the long run, it will save you both time and money. This tutorial is designed to give you a crash course in the process of soft proofing. But remember, soft proofing is done using computer monitors, which have a much wider color gamut than do printers. Soft proofing can never guarantee your print will be exactly like the image you're looking at on screen, but it can help you come as close to it as possible. But before you get started, it is important that you do two things. The first is to make sure your monitor is properly calibrated. Once you've initially calibrated, be prepared to recalibrate at least once a month. My experience with the Spider series by Datacolor has always been great, but there are plenty of others to choose from. Just remember, in order to achieve proper calibration, an application like Adobe Gamma just isn't good enough. You need a tool that will allow you to measure things like ambient light in addition to monitor color settings. The second thing you need is to obtain the correct ICC profile. Every device that captures or displays color can have its own profile, and the different papers, pigments, and inks which are used by many printers make it difficult to determine how exactly your print will look unless you have a preset that allows you to simulate these things. Finding the correct profile is as easy as contacting your printmaker. You should actually be able to download the profile you need directly from their website. Okay, now that your monitor is calibrated and you have the profile you're intending to use, let's start soft proofing. At first glance, my image looks great. The colors are vibrant, nothing looks off, and because I'm so happy with the image as it is, I'm going to duplicate it. But first I'm going to bring it up to 100%. I'll explain why this is important a little later. Now that I've duplicated the image, I have one for soft proofing and I have one to refer to in case I need to adjust my soft proofed image once I've added my ICC profile. You'll see exactly what I mean in a few minutes. So duplicate your image, give it a name, and this duplicate image is the one we'll be working on. I want to show you something before we apply our ICC profile. Remember when I told you that monitors are able to use a wider gamut to display colors than printers? From view, go to gamut warning. With that turned on, notice how much of our image is lost. Before you go through all your images turning on the gamut warning, it is important for you to understand that a gamut warning serves as an extremely lenient warning. In English, that basically means to take the gamut warning with a grain of salt. That's not to say the gamut warning is a useless tool, it actually serves its purpose quite well. What it's telling us is that the colors that are missing may be difficult for a printer to simulate exactly. You can expect these areas will appear similar in color once printed but an exact match won't be guaranteed. So the deep reds we see here and the midnight blue background are likely to be a bit off. Once we've soft proofed our image, we won't be able to turn this warning back on since it will be profiled specifically to the printer's color gamut. I hope that little illustration gives you a better understanding of how important soft proofing really is. So let's go back up to view and then to proof setup. This is where we apply the ICC profile. But because I obtained one of these from the printmaker, it's considered a custom setup. Select custom at the top and a new window will open up. From this window, I'm going to select the ICC profile, but I'm also able to use this window to simulate how my print will look based on the profile I've chosen. Device to simulate is how Photoshop asks you for your preferred ICC profile. I'm going to click the drop arrow and select my profile from the list, and then I'm going to leave preserve RGB numbers unchecked and move right down to rendering intent. Perceptual is what I recommend using, but if you prefer relative color metric, feel free to use that instead. I also recommend checking black point compensation. If you haven't got a full understanding of black points, think of it as this. The black in your image may have a brown tone to it, whereas the printer gives black a bluish tone. Black point compensation will find a happy medium for both your image and the printer it's being printed with. There's one last thing we need to do before clicking OK. 
we need to choose our on-screen display options. Now let me warn you ahead of time, this is a hard step to get through. This is also the reason I suggested bringing the image up to 100%. When we click this box, our image will be instantly transformed. Colors will appear washed out and dingy. Believe it or not, 75% of that is optical illusion. Our eyes have grown so accustomed to seeing white a certain way for so long that seeing it any other way just seems wrong. Notice that as I checked simulate paper color, simulate black ink has selected itself by default. These two go hand in hand when simulating paper color. Keep in mind that this step does nothing to change my image. It simply simulates how it will appear on paper. And depending on the ICC profile assigned to different paper types, simulating paper color may not always have the same effect. The best advice I can give you about on-screen display options is the same advice I gave you about gamut warnings. Take it with a grain of salt. Now I'm going to click OK so that I can compare my two images and see if I need to make any adjustments. Some people actually prefer to leave this off, and if you are one who tends to overcompensate when applying adjustments to your images, you may want to leave it unchecked as well. Now comparing these two images, I definitely want to make some adjustments. Of course, I can instruct you on this last step since every image is different. But if you really like the look of the original, just try to bring your soft proofed image as close to your original image as necessary to achieve the look you want.